want to go first? Who's organized? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I should. Um, um, yeah, so, I mean, like I said, I took everything that um, Professor Clark had to say really, you know, to heart and um, went into the interview very professionally dressed and even kind of handed a resume and um, in practice the main things that I wanted to say, you know, out loud, like you would in, in an interview. And um, so I felt really prepared. Um, I didn't know the interview, my interview ended up lasting about an hour and a half, so it was very intensive. Um, he just, my supervisor just really went through my autobiography and really just picked out what he probably perceived to be my biggest learning edges and maybe my deep, deepest wounds. And um, being a, you know, a chaplain for 30 years, I felt like he could really see me well. And luckily I'm pretty comfortable being myself and I really, I feel like I'm pretty self-aware so I was ready. But it, he did get a couple of things where it just kind of felt like, almost one time he felt like it knocked the wind out of me for a second because mm. I was like, woo, that was a powerful question. And um, had to compose myself and answer it. So the interview was really intensive. Um, it was kind of like uh, he was saying it's um, um, you have to be ready to go deep and what they're just going to really look at what you write in your spiritual biography and they're going to want to know what you want to work on. It, it was like a very two-way thing. It wasn't just like a job interview where he's asking me questions. There were more open-ended questions like, can you tell me more about what it was like when your mom died? And like, um, so just... Um, really wanting to know how much you've worked on yourself, how do you handle, it, you know, if you walk in a room and you see someone like your mom laying on the bed, are you going to be triggered? Like, just went right there for it. So um, just be prepared for the intensity of the interview, um, depending on what you write about. And um, do you want to talk about your interview process? We can start with that. Oh, uh, well, funny story. I actually didn't do an interview <laughs> for mine, which maybe should have been a warning sign. I think um, they tried to fill the program and hadn't had any luck. And um, I was actually planning to spend the summer working at a museum in Chicago when suddenly I got a letter in the mail saying I'd be accepted into this program. I think that happened in like <laughs> mid-April, uh, maybe later than then. Um, but I've, I've heard similar stories mm -hmm. about the intensity of the interview. And uh, I would encourage you to do an interview. Um, <laughs> and to ask very pointed questions about, not just about the philosophy of your instructor, but about the culture of your program. Um, one of the things I got from the um, thing I went to last year was that there are different types of program philosophies. Um, there's the old school confrontational model where their main goal is to make you cry as much as possible. Um, and then there are newer, kinder ways of doing things. Um, and I ended up in the old school confrontational model because I did not ask enough questions. Um, and I would not necessarily recommend that sort of program. Um, it's it, it can be very, it can be pretty awful, actually. Um, so, <laughs> No, um, it's not so much yeah. in line with the uh, Star King. Right, <laughs> not so much in line with the Star King Co. And, and I actually, I was looking for a trial by fire, so the cost confrontational model I think was good for me. Um, in a lot of ways, but it was very difficult. There were definitely days I went home and I was like, F this, um, these people are horrid. Um, so, and they were wonderful people. It was just the culture of the place was very, very confrontational. Yeah, and for me to say, like an important question that I asked in my interview was, what was my supervisor's mentoring style? What was his supervising style? So I found out he said that he, um, they have an adult learning style method where we all learn from each other and they're kind of just a guide, but they really wanted us to teach each other, like respect each other's philosophy. There was no r one right way and they were just more like kind of witnesses to the group process and they were very gentle and I felt loving. And so, um, and I got that from him from the interview. So I just want to reiterate like how you feel with your supervisor in the interview is like really important. Like even though he was asking me these intense questions, there were this like, gentleness and grace to them and I felt very safe in answering them and I knew mm -hmm. that that I could go to some deep places with him and he and he would be there supportive his responses were very compassionate and so I really trusted him from the beginning and um, and I walked out there being like wow I was really vulnerable but I still feel really safe so I could do this experience with him so just what is your initial 
intuition about how you're going to work with these, this person, how are they asking you the questions, like, how do you feel with them when you share something vulnerable, um, and like he said, it's really important because um, when I was in CPE, we meet once a week at least for an hour and a half in his office, my supervisor's office, and talk about things. So they're a really big part of your experience. And then in ministry group, which you'll have, there your supervisors are there. Um, they're there almost all the time. So it's really important, the relationship you have with them. Yeah. I, I also had a supervisor I really trusted. Um, but the, again, like I just said, the culture of the place was something that I'd also really recommend mm -hmm. investigating. Um, you know, maybe ask to meet some of the department, ask how, if they felt the culture of the place has changed, if it's been there for a while. Um, how, how rigorous they feel the program is. If they tell you that we feel we are intensely rigorous, that might be an indication that they're perhaps a little confrontational. Um, so asking some questions like that. Um, you know, how, and, and two, um, one of my biggest regrets from CPE is that I didn't seek out mentorship from the other chaplains in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just your supervisor that you necessarily be dealing with. So if you can, perhaps briefly meet some of the other chaplains and get a feel for what they're like. That's an excellent thing to do. Um, I would highly recommend that. Because, uh, yeah. yeah. And while you're there, seeking out the advice of it, asking to shadow other chaplains. Um, you know, your supervisor can be a great source and you should have a good relationship with them, but don't necessarily limit yourself to that. Mm -hmm. And then also, a lot, I know a lot of people mentioned like they might want to live somewhere with their family and so they're looking in that and, that, and just something to keep in mind, I have a friend who just got done with her first, first unit of CPE and she just chose the Philadelphia hospital because she wanted to live for rent free with her parents. She ended up getting placed in the ER, in the Philly ER, and um, had the most intense experience I've ever heard. She still kind of has post-traumatic stress from it, um, has nightmares and just wasn't prepared to work in the ER there and see five gunshot victims to the head at night, be up all night, um, severed arms and chaos all the time. And um, compared to my experience, which was intense, I was on call once a week, I got one to two pages a night, but nothing compared to hers. And she just chose that hospital because she wanted to live at home for free. And I know that's like, but, but just to keep that in mind, like she had no idea what she was getting into. Everything that just guided her was that she could live with her parents. And I. She wouldn't say she wouldn't do it again, but she's still recovering for what she didn't really want at all. So just to keep that in mind. And I had a similar experience to your friend. I, um, I was like, the only way I can afford to do CPE is if I live with my parents and do it at the home hospital. And for a lot of ways, that was great. Um, but that meant I literally went directly from the end of the semester into CPE. Um, so one thing is to check the dates. Make sure you will have at least a week in the beginning to recover from the semester and at least a week at the end. Um, again, to recover before the semester, and yeah, I'm still emotionally recovering from the summer because um, you know I was doing on calls two times a week, um, and I would get, generally speaking, at least like 20 pages a night. Um, again, with the I did, yeah, a lot of suicides, a lot of um, you know muggings, a lot of the because I was at a level one trauma center, so we got all the traumas from like the surrounding five counties. Which was cool. I got to meet a huge diversity of people from like rural Appalachia and all these different places. But it, it was it was very intense emotionally. I don't think I was necessarily prepared for that. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a basic question. Mm -hmm. How does a, what does a unit of CPE do? And, and the requirement. I was, yeah. And what is the requirement? For ordination. Uh, for ordination, I believe it's one unit of CPE, and a unit of CPE is kind of just like one credit of CPE. So if you do a year long, you get four units of CPE, um, mm -hmm. one every like three months. And if you do an extended, you'll go for longer, and you'll end up with one unit. Mm -hmm. It's four hundred hours. Yeah. yeah, and you spend three hundred hours mm -hmm. um, actually. You know, being a chaplain or whatever, and 100 hours reflecting, right? Is mm -hmm. yeah, that's something else I want to talk about. That's yeah. really cool. Um, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, it's, yeah, you're in you're in this group. You have your ministry group, um, and you're learning together. And they're either doing didactics on um, reflective listening or trauma ministry, 
um, you're, you know, you're sharing uh, your experiences for 100 hours during the summer, and in the 300 hours, you're on the floor being a chaplain. So you're, you know, so a day for me, for example, would look like, like in the morning I'd be learning till 10 o'clock, then I'd be on my unit as a chaplain, checking in with people for two hours, then I'd have lunch, then I'd have another um, learning didactic for an hour, and then until the end of the day I was on my own as a chaplain again. So that was pretty cool. Like, I got to, and then I'd get to come out back to my group and, you know, talk about things that I was dealing with with patients, and then I'd also you know, got to go out and respond according to some feedback. Um, so it's really neat in that way. Uh, in fact, can you for me? Um, because the CPE experience is structured um, with the inclusion of the didactics and so much work with the supervisor and with your peer group, there is not another class of a staff team that you need to take, yeah. like when you do the internship either congregation or community internship, there is a seminar that you take here. So, mm -hmm. Because you do that work in the seminar with the group, but you have the group of peers, you have all this learning time mm -hmm. that is part, integral part of the CPA experience so that you are not taking uh, another group. And when I first arrived, if some students wanted to have an online group to check in with each other. And after yeah. a few weeks, oh, everyone yeah. said, no. We don't, we, the yeah, last thing we, we want to do is talk group. about it. And anymore. I knew, and I was so happy. <laughs> now they, it was uh, tested, and then people <clears> trusted <throat> the, you know, yeah. the fact yeah. that it actually was true. I mean, yeah. It can always be done, but, that actually, but then people really don't have the time. Yeah. So one CP unit, is how, how is that just one unit for Star King? Or no, no, no. It's 10. It's oh, 10. Okay. I was going to say, so also, wait a minute. <laughs> in other days, uh, since you asked, uh, if you don't mind, I'll say it now since okay. the question came. You don't have to do CPE to graduate. It's not a requirement. So, for instance, it might happen that you think you really have to do CPE to be ordained or maybe you want to become a... But, but you can also do it after if things happen in your life oh, so that you cannot do it. Mm -hmm. So, just know that, remember that. Then, if, if you do a unit, you get 10 credits. Oh, okay. That's and the way it works for the fall and spring semester is that you reg register for this credits also as Star King, and the course is under my name. So you will be telling me that you are doing anything, and, and you get the, at the end of the semester asked to see your supervisor evaluation so that it's testified that you did it, that, you know, you their experience was uh, overall positive, and then you get the credits. Like if you, you know, were doing an internship. So it doesn't count in the summer, it'll count in, in the, the summer. It can also count, but there is a different process, and it's all in the handbook. The oh, process, okay. you just went through it. Mm -hmm. You brought, instead mm -hmm. of bringing me the supervisor's evaluation, you brought through an advisor. Two advisor. Yeah. And it doesn't count if you're part-time, it doesn't count for the fall. The credits count when you do them. So my summer credits count as summer credits. Okay. They don't. They don't impact on the fact that I'm half time right now. So then, do you pay to? Do you have to pay tuition for that? No. Oh, okay. Well, you pay well, their it's tuition. Five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Right. But I mean, not to start. Okay. Yeah. 